it's Karen from Lion Gate Farm and today I am going to teach you how to make the cutest llama. Okay, so today we're going to make this cute little posable llama. Total armature. Tail is wired, ears are wired. That's the secret actually to making llama ears because llama ears look like bananas. Um, feet are wired. We're going to use a couple things. So let me show you. He stands about seven inches tall, so little. If you wanted to make this an alpaca, you just need to make him a little shorter. A little neck a little shorter, legs a little shorter. So let me show you what we're going to use. I'm gonna set him aside. You're gonna use core wool. And basically, I just use core wool. You, if you want his head wider, or if you wanted to use different colors, you can. Um, need a little tiny bit of pink for in his ears. Black hoofs and details and then wire um 16 gauge wire for the body pieces let me tell you what i've got going here so you're gonna need one 13 and a half inch piece and that will be his head and neck and then you'll need two nine inch 16 gauge wires and then you have a tail a tail wire and an ear wire the ear wire is four inches long 18 gauge and the tail wire of course you know i didn't write down how long that is um it is like three inches just to add a little tail in there is no wire in the body itself per se but there's um these wires and then you'll need a skewer to use my magic my magic a little skewer, you know, to make a hole for your wires to run through. So the first shape we're going to make is the body shape. And it's this little hot dog shape. And you're going to make a little hot dog that is about four and a quarter by about one and a half. That's what I have on my cheat sheet. And that's what this measures. And you can use a skewer if you want to get started that way. I'm going to tear off a little piece of corbel. Oh, you also need locks. Lots of little curly locks to make his body, you know, to decorate him when we're done. So I'm going to start just by wrapping my skewer. Remember, four inches by one and a half. The tighter that you wrap, again, the less you have to poke. And remember, let go of it every time you come around. This project's a little bit harder than um, some of the other ones because it does have, you know, armature legs and whatnot. And the head, and it took me a while to get a llama that would be successful for everyone because llamas are camels. They're a camelid, just like an alpaca. They're not like a sheep. My friend around the corner has a whole bunch of alpacas and she's dying to make her, one of these into an alpaca, which is why I've been trying to develop a little easy llama or alpaca. The weather here has been pretty decent, had a really good weekend, 65 degrees, and then Monday, Monday and Tuesday were nice and then it got windy. Oh boy, did it get windy. So I've done a little gardening out there. A little. Little is the operative word. And then it got windy. Boy, did it get windy. Um, our cherry tree, half of it broke off. So I'm in the middle of cleaning up that mess. And blackberries. You can tell by my hands, I've been in the blackberries. Even with gloves on. They're the evilest plant on the planet. I hate blackberries. I like to eat them. I don't like the plants. And it is the Oregon State weed. <laughs> if I get the bushes down far enough, the sheep will eat them. But it's still the Oregon State weed. They come up everywhere. It kills me when I go to the garden centers and they're selling blackberries. It's like, for real? Why are you selling blackberries?
you know, if they could cross tomatoes and blackberries or any kind of vegetables with blackberries, you know, the way they do that to make things grow faster, that would be an optimum thing to cross it with because blackberries grow so fast. So you can see I'm just, I'm stabbing this until I get a nice hot dog shape. Pull your skewer out. Remember, always stab your ends or you get, you know, your middle will come out with the skewer. And that's how you know you wrapped it tight is if the middle starts to come out. So make this kind of even all the way down. Until you get this nice hot dog form and I'm going to switch forms on you watch that all right so now what we have here is the body and we're going to put the head in so I I had you cut a 13 and a half inch wire and I want you to find the center of it but don't pinch it don't pinch it here okay so what we're going to do at about one at about a half an inch into the body, you're gonna run your skewer up there and you're gonna follow it with the wire on one side. And then we're gonna pull it back and we are going to run this wire up. You might have to finagle this a little. Yeah, you might have to do it twice. This one doesn't want to go through because I stabbed it so well, but it will. I'm working it through. There we go. Don't worry if it's not perfect. And you don't really have to worry if these are perfect. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take and twist it. See, this is a total cheat armature for a head. And we want, the neck will end up about three inches long total, but you have to remember we're gonna build up from the body. So from the bottom of the body, we're just gonna come, you don't want this neck to be too long. And you don't want the head to be too long. So we're gonna bend this back just a little like that. So what we ended up with, I think it's three inches, about three inches and about an inch and a half for his head. Could be a little bit less. So let's, you can either clip off the wire. I think I want to make it more like an inch, an inch in there. You don't want it too big. Or your alpaca looks, your, excuse me, your llama will look silly. All right, so now we have a head. So now we're going to put in some legs. So at about an inch and a quarter back, we're going to go about a third of the way up the body. And you're going to take one of these nine inch wires and you're just going to follow it through. Find cent just find the center. There, and you've got one. Same thing back here, but just about an inch and a quarter. Try and keep them on the same line. Follow it through. Now, don't worry if your wires are different. It won't hurt anything. Now, the thing that's different between alpacas and like any other animals is they have pretty skinny legs. So you're just going to put like a gentle curve in there that's about two inches. And you're going to make a bend there. Their legs don't stick out so far behind them. And I'm going to show you on one that I already have done. 
as you can see, they come out and those little hocks are just a little bit back. Your total leg length should be about two and a half is what I want to say. Wait a minute. Let me, let me, now it's going to be about three and a half. So three and a half about, and then you're going to make some little bends. We may adjust this later. I'm constantly adjusting them when I make the legs. So, oops. So this, I know that this bend here is about an inch. Boy, I got out of whack there. Hold on. So we have a gentle bend. And then we're up about an inch. And then I don't really worry about the front ones having any kind of bends in them. Oh my goodness. Get back where you go. Except that I want them to be the same length the back legs. Don't worry if if they're not. So you have a basic unwieldy, isn't it? It's really unwieldy. So let's fix that right away. One reason I hate working with armatures is because they're all over the place. Even if you do a complicated armature where you have the skeleton, like some of the um, other videos that you watch, it's still all over the place. All right, so we have a general idea of where that's going to land. Canon, there's M&Ms on the counter. <laughs> He's going to get some, warm up his tea, I think. All right, so you're going to take like a little four inch piece. Look at that, a piece of my farm or a piece of someone's farm. Sometimes it's a leg, so that's why I took it out. And I want to start securing this leg. So I'm just gonna wrap it around and up and stab it in. So remember, it needs to be, that's your neck, this is your legs. I brought that piece all the way around the body and I did it on this side. Same thing, around and up and let's stab it in. And that's gonna help secure the legs where they're gonna actually end up we're kind of going to do the same thing in the back. Round it up. And then we're going to come I'm going to come around. They're still going to move. I'm just trying to help you get them a little bit more solid at this point. And you can see it's going to start building like the shoulder and the little haunch area. So you don't have to be super complex about your armatures. You just want to get them into where they're going to be. This guy seems, let me check. Now nope, he's about the right, his neck might be a little bit long. I will, or his legs are too long. I will check that. I think this one is too long. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about that at this point. All right, so let's build a back leg. Like I said, this is a little bit harder than my average project for you, but you all wanted it, so you're getting it. We're going to take two four five inch pieces divided in half we're gonna work one leg at a time so I'm moving one leg out of the way but I'm holding on to it so that the armature does not slip and I'm gonna wrap I'm holding it there and I'm gonna wrap down and then I'm gonna wrap back up because this little thigh area like I said their legs are pretty skinny And I'm using the excess to go to the back side there for his little hiney. So 
So I still don't think I have enough there, but only right here. Just want to build that up just a little. You know, and once we get the curlies on, you're not going to see this very much, but you still want the shape to be almost right. Those little curls can hide a lot of flaws in our armatures, in our sheep, in our goats, in our little llamas and alpacas. This is just a whimsical little alpaca or llama. I keep saying that they're interchangeable except for in their size. But you can see that that firmed that leg up. So let's flip it over. We're going to do another leg. Actually, I'm going to do the front leg on this side. And now I can see that my legs are almost the same length. We'll adjust that. So on this side, I am just going to keep, I'm going to build it up one more time this way. And I tore that off and I'm going to go down just a little ways, like knee ways. And then I'm going to come back up. So you can see we're building up ex almost exactly the same shape on all of the legs. I keep fiddling with this because I don't like it because that's not quite it whoops not quite an inch so I need to adjust this I'm gonna leave that bend the same remember I don't want it too far back that's probably about right that might be too much I'm gonna fiddle with this until I get it the way I like it Probably there. Test your test your guide and make sure that the legs are the right length. So the other thing you need to t make a note of is that um, alpacas and llamas are very narrow right here in. They're wider in the chest area. I actually have a little belly and then, but this, they have a waist. This is very skinny. So we're not going to build that up a lot. So just like I did on the other side, I'm wrapping it around. I'm pulling it pretty tight. But I'm not building up, I'm just building up his haunches here, not his belly area. We'll add that on in a minute. Looks pretty silly from the back at the moment. But your excess should have built up his hind end. We're going to poke that two separate legs. I'm going to switch to the pin tool because it'll go faster.
Remember, these little these legs are little and skinny. You do want them to be the same size. So keep checking them between each other. So we have his little back legs on. This one looks longer and it might be. But are we gonna stand up straight? Yes, we are. Keep testing to see if we're gonna stand up straight. And because we added the wires, you know, you can pull them back and forth with a little bit of force. until you get them exactly the way you want them. All right, let's add to this leg. Then we will Again, I'm only going down to about his knee. You can always move these out of the way if you're having trouble wrapping. The fun thing about armature is that, you know, you have options. Remember, you have your head wire in there. So be careful while you're poking that you don't break your needles. They do have a little bit of a chest, not a lot, but they do. It does stick out in front of their legs. Get all this extra worked in. I'm trying to decide if I want you to do the legs now or if we want to do the head first. I think we're going to do the head first. Save the legs. They're the hard part. I'm going to save that for last. But we are going to build up his little belly. So I just took off about a six inch piece and I'm stacking it into about that much. Just a nice little stack. And it only goes right here. Remember, leave this space narrow. Let's attach this. So first attach this little band. I like starting with the hot dog shape because it takes all the guesswork out of how thick do I make the belly or the whole body. And you can kind of just build up almost anything from there, but you can see we're getting a nice little belly. but we're maintaining this narrow little waist back here. So now we want to add on his neck and his head. I'm going to compare him to the guy I already have done and see where we're going to go with this. Corbel that I have here is a little bit darker, like 
ecru. So I ripped off about a six to eight inch piece and I split it and I'm gonna attach it right here at the shoulder so I can wrap up the neck. I'm gonna push that wire up and I'm gonna go right over his head Still have wire sticking out because there's lots of wire in here because we twisted it. This is our base layer. I just want to make sure it's felted on there pretty good. And by now it's looking like a dinosaur, like a brachiosaurus or whatever. <laughs> One of those really long neck dinosaurs. So same thing, I'm gonna attach it at the shoulder right here. And then I'm going up the neck. So the neck ends up, it's, you know, it's three inches long about. I am wrapping it fairly tight, as you can see. Remember, the harder, you, the firmer you wrap it, the less you gotta poke it. And so we are aiming for the one thing I didn't write down. Um, about three quarters of an inch. Is that three quarters? Yeah, I guess it is about, it's about seven eighths inch wide. That way, three quarters inch this way. So seven eighths, three quarters. And kind of keep it in the middle of your body. So I need another wrap for sure. So because I'm getting wider over there, I'm gonna ask start from this side this time. And just go up and I can see that it's getting to be the width that I want it. And the reason I keep showing you the half done one is because it's deceiving to look at the one that has the curls on it already. I wanted to make sure you could see what we were aiming for. We're not gonna work on the head quite yet, but let's make sure that the neck stays pretty even all the way up. Okay, so I don't like this. I want a nice smooth transition there and a nice smooth transition there. So we're gonna fill those in. Let's make a little stack. I just wanna fill that in. can look at pictures of llamas online so you can kind of see where their muscles are and see what you need to form in there. They're actually pretty narrow animals. You know, they don't have a lot of width to their bodies. See, by adding those pieces, we just worked this neck right into that chest. And now I'm going to fill this little gap in back here in the back of his neck so that it will... I keep saying his, it could be a her. 
could be. We don't have any llamas as guard animals. I think it would be fun. My husband is afraid that they'll get, he'll get spit on. That's why we don't have any llamas. <laughs> I think that if we got one when it was little, but then, you know, the whole premise is he would have to spend time with it so it got to know him so it wouldn't spit on him. And he does not spend a lot of time with my sheep. Trust me. Only if he has to. Which he had to two weeks ago when we sheared. He had to spend a lot of time with them. So what I'm doing right now is working on making sure this neck is all the same width. I'm going to switch back to my single needle. I got it a little bit thicker up here than I wanted, but it's okay. I'm going to just felt it down. That's what's cool about felting is that you can make it do what you need it to do. Okay, I know we're still 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 looking like a dinosaur here. But we're getting there. So the neck is going to end up back a little and the head's going to go that so now let's finish that head so the shape you're looking for is kind of like a triangle 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 from the top narrow at the nose flat flat a little bit rounded on the back not a lot so if you were doing it true to life mine is whimsical their nose is way back from their front lip like a camel but that head shape is hard to do so let's just make a whimsical one I think that that's a better idea the head ends up being about um, one inches wide and half one and a half inches long at least that's what I wrote on my paper so I just wrapped a little bit more. You need to have at least enough on here to get, be away from the wire. So my wire is right there. So I'm gonna add a little piece on the end here because I will not be able to sculpt in a nose or a mouth if that wire is in the way. Which is why I shortened my wire up earlier to only be one inch. So what I'm doing is adding this piece on carefully because I keep hitting my wire. But I'm still maintaining the fact that it's narrow right here. I'm going to work it from all the sides. So I want it narrow at the very end. If I had to guess, it's probably going to be like half an inch, but I'll give you an actual measurement in a minute. You see, I'm able to felt a little bit more right here because I added that on. I still might have to add a little bit more. My wire is right there. Remember, only the end of your needle works, so you shouldn't be stabbing in very far anyways. Just enough to grab those fibers and combine them. Also, your head needs to be felted pretty firm if we're going to sculpt a little face in it. 
even though it's not a complicated face. Darn wire is like right there. I'm going to have to add a little more, I think. Or maybe not. If you're worried that your wire is going to get in the way, you can always make it shorter than I did. It's like go shoot for three quarters of an inch instead of an inch to leave excess sticking out here. We're going to add a little bit more because we got to build up a little bit. <laughs> right here. So it looks like he has cheeks. Canon should not be allowed to do Instagram while we are felting. we go it's finally starting to form after all that poking remember until you get it to a certain rate of compaction it will not start to shape so I've got where my nose is gonna be right here in front of my thumb and I'm thinking triangle triangles but before I get it look at I got him all bent out of shape before I get it totally felted up at the top I am going to put in his ear wire the ear wire is the longer of the wires and the ears go just a little bit in front there of the neck so like right here you're gonna stick that skewer through and follow it with your ear wire four inch wire. All right. So we've got that in there, right? Find the center and your ears. Your ears are about an inch. I want to say yes. So the ears end up being about an inch. So find an inch and just bend it down. I know crazy way to make ears, right? You need to pinch it. You can use pliers if you want. I usually just use my fingers. Just pinch this wire. This is, I think that llamas have the hardest ears of all to make because they do look like bananas. So that is the shape of the ear you want right there. And then we're gonna wrap these Actually, maybe a little shorter. Nah, that's about right. There's your ears. So let's get those wrapped. This, you're going to use a very small amount of wool. Very small. You take tiny bits of wool. And we are going to secure it to the head. Those ear wires are in there for one reason only, and that is to give you the banana shape of your ear. Just, we're going to wrap them. Tried a bunch of different ways. 
do get wider at the bottom. You don't want you want to keep them flat. Remember, we'll be able to move them around. The other one wrapped just a tiny bit of fiber, tiny bit. So I have all this excess fiber I'm just poking into the back of the head. Now we have lots of wire to work around. We're going to add a little bit more to the ears in just a second. I want you to get them basically wrapped. You can see we have the shape of our llama head here. The ears kind of stick out to the side and turn into a banana. So this one isn't quite a banana, but we can turn it. So these you'll have to finagle with a little bit. Hopefully you can see past my hands because it is a small spot. I'm going to build the bottom of this one up a little bit. They're a little bit wider at the bottom than they are at the top. Again, we're working this fiber into the back of the head. Hopefully I haven't lost all you guys. This is a longer video than we normally do. Now, remember I said we're going to use a little bit of pink. I want you to take a little bit of pink. Let's poke it into the inside of the ear. I'm trying to avoid all the wires. So much wires. And yeah, pink will probably go to the back side of the ear, but you know we're not going to worry about that. You can always just poke it back through. I'm giving him his bunny ears. If you keep thinking banana shape, you're going to get the ears correct. Now we're going to think about eyes. Think about this triangle. Whoops, right here. Now see how I have all this pink? We're just going to work that in. No one will even notice it. I like to stab this way 
little bit. Their faces are really kind of narrow, their heads. So we know an eye is going to go right there, ear to the corner of the nose, and an eye is going to go right there. So I'm just stabbing a hole where the little ball of black is going to go. Working all this excess fiber in from the ears. And then the nose, what you're aiming for is just a little stab in where a little line of black is going to go. Hopefully your wire is not as close to the surface as mine is. And then I'm going to stab vertically because I know that my wire is right there. Don't go all the way to the bottom. And then a little bit of a smile. Now, if your wire did get too close to the surface, you can always use my Sharpie trick. But remember, if you're going to draw this on, still, still make the indents for it. And then just tap your Sharpie. Don't actually draw with your Sharpie to fill in the indents. I'm just smoothing out the face. Let's just take a little bit of black, roll it into a ball, the other eye, make sure they're in the same spot. Now I like this one. Well, that one's too small. We're going to add a little bit to that. Make sure they're the same size. You don't want them to disappear into the head. If they're doing that, you didn't felt your head hard enough. You just work up till they're about the same. Now, we're going to add just a few fibers. You can twist and pull your fibers. You, this is called drafting if you were spinning it. I'm going to start right here. Now, not all this fiber is going in the nose. Just some of it. Just going to work it back and forth. And then, remember, my wire's right there, so i got to stab this way. I'm just starting with a little to see if I like it. So I don't think I have enough to do the whole thing. I have to add some more. Make some black fibers there that don't belong. Okay, so now that I know I like the shape, I'm going to add more fibers. Don't put too many. I like to 
make this part a little bit wider. I'm building this guy out of core wool so that you guys can see that you don't always need a top coat. You know, core wool is sufficient sometimes if you want that nice ecru color and you've got good core wool. Now, I think his nose needs to be a little bit thicker. So let's add a few more fibers. So I'm doing the head first so you guys get really excited and you want to take your time on the legs because the legs you got to take your time on. And we're going to use power wax on the hooves. I like this part just to have just a little bit more. And I'll probably come back with scissors and trim. There is a piece of black fiber right there that's bugging me. All right, I'll probably come back and trim out any extra black fibers I have sitting in here with scissors. So we have this little face. And then we're going to add just a teeny bit of pink here. It'll end up being right here for his cheek. Just a sheer amount. And a sheer amount on those shots. Isn't that cute? It's so cute. You can use your little thing. I want to finish stabbing all this in and then we're on to the legs. I'm going to work on his body just a little bit more and get it ready for the, get this all nice and even and ready to add the legs. So it's going to take me, I want you to work on it, you know, get this all nice and even and poked and firmed up and then we'll come back in do the legs. All right, so I've been poking on this guy for probably 20 minutes. And remember, I poke fast, so it's not a race. Just until he's nice and smooth. You can see I've worked him smooth. But I wanted to come back and show you. I'm going to add some fiber. See how his leg caves in right here? I'm going to add some fiber to fill that in. Not a lot, just a little. I also stood him up to make sure that his legs, the leg bends are all even and that he will stand up um, when I'm done. But I am going to fill this in a little bit. So I didn't want to keep going without showing you what I'm, what I'm achieving here. So, so this will be nice and smooth. There we go. We have two separate legs, which forms his hiney here. And then I'm going to add a little bit right there. Just a, just a little, not a lot. I just want to fill that in. You remember the old saying, you can always add, but you can't take away. So it's better to just add a little if you need it than to have to try and work around too much fiber. So that smoothed out the legs. Nice. So one thing we're missing before we finish with the legs is we're going to take our little tiny wire. Um, that's the, the tail wire. And we're just going to make a little hole right here. Again, follow it through. And I just bend it up. And I'm just going to twist it a little bit 
and then so it's like this it's almost like a teardrop shape like that and then we're going to cover it let's I'm attaching my fiber because I want my tail to stick up. You know, they don't always stick up. So you could have your tail facing down if you want. Right now what I'm doing is just working on getting it to stay where I want it. You know, and I'm sure out there in YouTube land there is videos with llamas with full armatures that would probably have the tail built in. But this is just how I do it. And remember, we will be covering that with fiber with curlies, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's just make sure it's attached. It almost looks like a deer. now we have a tail so now we're gonna do the feet and you're gonna need some wire cutters and some pliers for this so I know that llamas and alpacas have a cloak they have two toes they don't really have feet they have toes but ours are gonna have just like a little hoof because it's just a whimsical little llama and when they're this small no one's really looking so they really have toes. So again, I'm making sure my guy stands up. And now I'm gonna take my wire cutters and I want to leave probably a half an inch. So hopefully you have a half an inch on each foot. About a half an inch. I'm just gonna nip that off put these aside. Now I'm going to take black. And the reason we didn't go all the way up is because I like the black to show through a little bit. It makes the legs a little bit gray. Um, it's going to give us a little tiny bit of contrast. I, I, I'm drafting this out. And this is actually black merino, which is way better for wrapping sometimes. You know how I'm anti-merino, but sometimes merino has its place because we're not going to felt it a lot. We're just going to wrap. So I'm going down my wire. I secured it and I'm going down my wire. If you have beeswax, you can put it on there, you know, or tacky wrap or any of those. I'm going to go past my bend. This is where your pliers would come in, bend it up, all right? And then I'm going to come back up. So there we have our little foot. And I'm trying to keep this pretty thin because I don't want super thick legs. Just go back up to where you can secure it. Secure it right here because we're going to cover it. I'm going to tear it off and secure it up in here. So, see, we hardly did any felting on that at all. Try and do this all in one piece. Because then what we're going to do is take a thin layer of our core or our body color. Secure it. And we're going to go back down. And just come back up. 
And see, I was not long enough, but since this is core wool, I should be able to just give it a couple pokes and tap it in. And then I want to cover this up. Again, this part right here is going to be covered with locks. There's one leg. So now we're gonna do all four legs exactly the same. I'm giving it a little bit of pokes. Do you see how this is a little light, light gray? And don't worry if this is a little bit hairy, we're gonna power wax that. I actually think I want to cover down a little bit further. I just like the tiny bit sticking out. All right, and we're gonna keep going and do all the other legs. I'll do it. Now this one I'll do with Coriadale so you can see the difference, how it looks. Hey, look, and there's a little bit of sparkle in this stuff. Same procedure. So if you have Corydale, same procedure. Wrap it down. Thin, very thin amount. Don't let it twist. Go past the bend. Bend it up. And then keep going back up. So Corydale wraps just as well as Merino. Sometimes better. And then, this is why it's important to make sure that your bends are all even Steven. Because even while you're working on this, you know, our legs, they get out of whack. And hopefully they'll line back up. Once we're done, I'm going to go down. Try and leave an even amount out as the other leg. Let's go back up. Again, I didn't grab enough. I would rather not have enough than have too much, though. Again, I'm not too worried about this black right here because I'm going to cover it up with locks. Remember, they have skinny legs. Let's get this all felted in. And there's our back legs. That leg looks a little longer, probably because my curve isn't the same. It's close. And testing to make sure they stand up straight. Now let's do the front legs. Again, very thin. Past the bend, bend it. The reason we go past that bend and bend it. Okay, that one does not want to bend. So I'm going to use my pliers and squeeze it. And go back up. Same as the back leg. Attach it. I may not have enough here. I might draft it out. I 
Sometimes when you're working on the legs, they get scrunched up and you can just pull on them to make them the right length. more to go. Normally I would just show you one and keep going, but I wanted you to see all four. squish that one. Now, do you see what's happening here? See how that's getting loose? And that is because I wrapped the other way. So you kind of want to go the same way. And then I got twisted. And that way, all your wrappings will stay tight. Try to make sure your legs stay the same size. You know, you'll see you have four legs the same size. I invariably get one fatter than the other. It's just a thing that happens. Still making sure they're the same length. Get this all felted in. I'm not liking how this caved in right here on me. So I'm going to add a little bit. And now I'm being picky. I just think that you maintain the shape of your animal better if it's all nice and smooth and doesn't have weird cave-in spots. All right, so now we've got our guy. He's standing up. He's doing this. So what we're going to do before we put on our locks, because that's where we're at. We're at lock stage. I'm going to take my power wax. And I don't carry this yet. But I'm planning on it. And I'm going to power wax all his legs up to the knees. Because I want them smooth. Now, power wax, you gotta work it in. And what this is gonna do is make them not hairy. Gets rid of all those little fibers. Work it in. And when you're twisting it in, make sure you're going the same way you're wrapped, just like we did. You can already see that. We've, and if you end up with any of these strays, you can trim those off. And, and as soon as this dries, we will take pliers and mold his feet a little bit. It doesn't take a lot of power wax, and you do get a, a tiny bit of color change. A tiny bit. Um, if you put too much on, you get a lot. But one way to avoid that color change is after it's dry, you can take like a mini iron and hit your power wax spots and it will sink into your fiber even more and return it to almost no color change. Those little mini irons are really cool for smoothing out your felting. It's a good investment if you're gonna felt a lot. There we go. All right, we are all power waxed. So I'm going to come back and put on the locks after I put this away. Okay, so the power wax has mostly dried. 
And I like to tip their feet forward, and you probably need your pliers to do that. So just take your pliers and just do a little tip on the feet, because we're not making toes. We're just going to tip them a hair, 45 degree angle, and then it, it mimics the fact that they have toes. Okay. And we got this little guy standing up. So all that's left to do is we got his little blush on his face, got his little ears. You can make more into bananas. We are going to attach locks. Um, these are just little blue face locks. I start on the legs. We're gonna go to the knees. Don't wrap them tight, just wrap them on there. Now there is a trick to putting locks on any kind of a sheep or a llama that you're working with. And I'm, I'm sure some of you have figured this out making some of my other stuff. So locks, you know, they, they don't attach super easy, but to get them to look good, you kind of need to bunch them up. So I just took a wad of them. And if you notice, there's little fuzzies on the locks. So I'm bunching them. I'm using my needle and I'm pulling them together and I'm bunching them up. And I'm using those little fuzzies to attach them to my felted project. If you stretch it out and just if you stretch it out and just start felting it on, it will flatten. We don't want these locks to flatten. We want them to stay floofy like that. So that's one leg. I start with all four legs first. That's what I want to do first. Again, I'm going to wrap it around. And you see that black's going to disappear. And still remember you have a wire in there. Bunch those locks up. The more care you take attaching your locks with their fuzzies, the better your project will look. If you go too fast, you'll end up with a flattened lock. Now, when I wash my locks, I try to get them all separate. I try, but sometimes there's a little felting that occurs when I wash them or when they're dyed. But most of the time I try to get my locks to stay separate. Um, it's a process. So when I have a raw fleece, I sit and I pull every single lock apart from each other. Then I wash them. Two things happen. They get cleaner that way. And um, then we get this awesome product for felting. but it can take a while to do. It allows me to pull a lot of the vegetable matter out too. Not all the dirt always gets out, but you know, it's part of wool. My sheep live outside, what can I say? Their favorite fashion accessory is blackberries. They will come and drag in almost a whole bush sometimes because these fuzzy locks get stuck on the blackberries. So you can see I got carried away and I just kept going up the body instead of following my own rule of thumb and doing all four legs first. So I'm going to go back to that after I get that one. They were all attached. You can see I'm bunching them up as I put them on. Bunch it up. You don't want to, you just want a, a layer of a single lock layer. So even though we're bunching it up, it's just one lock at a time. That way you're not making it too, too thick.
Sometimes I'm pretty picky about what wax I use. You just want to cover every little spot. You could leave this area right in here bare. You don't have to cover that. But we want to get down to his knees where you started with your power wax. You don't have to use power wax. I just think it gives it a way cleaner leg look. I heard from my contact in the UK today. She's getting together some new Mosham locks for me. So you know, Mosham is a breed of sheep that makes the really, 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 really long locks that we like to use on our Santas and stuff. And I am almost out of them. So she's sending me some more. I'll have to wash them all up, but I'm kind of excited. I'll be able to offer those to you guys again on our website. Remember, if you need supplies, you can go to the www.liongate.org and find lots of locks, different kinds, washed and dyed. If you need locks, and then if you need any kind of core wool, that awesome core wool, or colors, any color of Corydale Sliver you can imagine I have. And if you, I don't have it and you need a special color, holler at me. I bet I could dye some for you. So a lot of time I'll just loosely felt on the locks until I get how many I want. So this is a little bit felted together, but I'm just going to work with it. I'm just going to poke it into his belly and work it up his side. But I'm still only doing one lock deep. But see how we kept that narrow waist? We'll work on that in a minute. Get your locks all on and then you can shape them. But see, because we made this little shoulder area, we're able to maintain it. I like to put the locks on with a single needle so I can catch those fuzzies. So a little bare spot on this leg. Again, I just lay them on and gather them up with the needle and poke them on. We're bunching them up to make it look fluffy. Want to maintain the shape of your llama under the locks. If you put too many on, you'll lose it. You'll just turn into a giant fluff ball, and then all of your sculpting is for naught. I'm gonna wrap his little tail. When, I'm, when I say wrap, this is one time where I don't want you to wrap it too tight. Just enough to hold it on there. Make sure the tip's not sticking out. I'm 
don't know if you can see in the camera where I'm grabbing the fuzzies and, and felting them in. So I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to add all these fuzzies and I'm going to go up his head to the neck and just to between his, near, his ears. And I'll come back when I have them all on. So putting these locks on might be the most time consuming part of the whole llama if you're going slow, but I want to show you one thing. You can see, see this wrap line, how you can see those lines. I like to work them together so it looks like there's no line because we want this to look like a real animal coat. So you just have to take your time and work them all on, get them all up around. I only come to the back of the ears Just find all the fuzzies and work them in. After you get them all on, go back through. So you know that there's a shoulder right here. Compact it a little bit to give it that definition. But remember, don't over felt them or they will flatten out and look just like core wool. So you want to get them all on there. I put them on the belly. Again, I didn't put them... Um, between the front legs, a little bit here. Got a little piece of vegetable matter. I'll just poke it in. It will disappear. So take these little loose pieces and get them all poked in. It's going to take a bit. Um, takes me a while. But if you want it to look good, you got to sit and give it the effort. It's not a race. So then this is your little your little llama. Make sure his legs are still good. Reposition him if you need to. And then you can tie a bow around his neck if you want. Put a bow in her hair up here if it's a girl. Just take your time and have fun with it. That is the most important part. I just keep seeing more fuzzies that need to be felted in. But I hope you enjoy this llama video and have fun with it. And remember, post what you make. It doesn't have to be my video stuff. Anything you make, post it on the Lion Gate Farm Southern Oregon Felting Group. Join it, post it. We want to see it. Thanks for joining me today as we made our cute little llamas. And if you liked it, click like. And then make sure you follow us because it really helps us out. And if you need supplies, head over to liongate.org and check out what I have there. See you next time.